Okay, so I'm kind of beating around the bush here. I got to cut to the cut to the chase. Um, so it doesn't have to be full lotus. It could be running, right? Say you take up running, and you do it. It's all about uh, you, know, you go for a run every day. And you go longer and longer each day and faster and faster, but in a way that's really relaxed. You relax, you make sure there's no injuries, you know. I ran cross country when I was in my youth as a sport and, uh, you know, almost everyone would get injured. <laughs> so retarded. I did wrestling in my youth. Almost everyone would get injured. Now, injury is not the end of the world, but, uh, you know, who needs to go about training in that way? The, 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 the concept in Tai Chi is when your opponent applies pressure on you, if you're practicing the Tai Chi right, their pressure only strengthens you. <clears throat> it's, a whole, it's a whole mechanics. It's not, it's, not, it's not an idea, it's a whole mechanics of practice. That when they push on you, if your body mechanics are right, it, 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 it pushes you into the ground and you're pushing off the ground and it, you can strengthen your body that way. So their challenge actually makes you stronger. Whereas, you know, like say Thai kickboxing or something, it's a little easier that they might break your arm. And, um, so what is it that we can do that gives us our greatest challenge. Someone got in touch with me recently. They're going through a, a little bit of a medical emergency. They said, Ephraim, can you do distance healing? This, this term distance healing, it always sort of connotates in general. <laughs> in general, the whole field is not the greatest field in the holistic movement, in my opinion. Um, and I said, listen, I can help you concentrate on your pain and relax into it. And, and help you work it out that way. And they said, no, 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 I want you to take it away. Like with magic, you know. And that's, that's a classic, uh, that's a classic grip hold the Avodazars have had on people. Avodazar means like the, the forbidden spiritual paths. That's a classic grip that they've had on people over the ages is, is uh, you know, someone will be sick and you can kind of get some kind of occult form of healing and heal them with it and then get a, get a grip on their pocketbook or on their soul that's really unethical. So uh, that's, that reason alone is really why to only work with the most ethical healers. And that's one of the secrets of healing, too, is that when you go to someone who's really ethical, that's really a large part of what's healing you, and maybe all of what's healing you. <laughs> you check out a lot of successful healers, quite a few of them are just really ethical, beautiful people. Successful doctors, the same thing. Um... And that's back to how we train, how we meditate. Uh, the real intensive training, whether it's in Tai Chi, whether it's in business, whether it's in meditation, whether it's in Kabbalah, the real intensive training without ethics is completely dangerous, always, <laughs> without exception. Um, so that's another part of the triangle is, you know, intensive practice, intensive relaxation, and intensive ethics. I'm, uh, I'm looking for the right lawyer to work with in terms of uh, making all aspects of my business really legally clear and practical and creative. L law for me is really creative, really creative process law. And I want to find the right lawyer that's not just a technician, 
you know, so any referrals or ideas are welcome, especially someone you know you worked with personally. And um, and I told them, like, you know, to me, the study of ethics and the study of law in Judaism, it's like one thing, you know, and in, in American law, it's definitely, it's definitely not the same thing. It's like in American law, it's almost like a comedy. You can, you can just forget that ethics have anything to do with law. It's just so technical and, 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 you know, like the whole idea of law being all about goodness. It's really like, you know, if you mention it, a lot of times people just give you a funny look, like, what are you talking about? Laws about, you know, cutthroat, savage. Um, so, uh, Our law should be the law of peace. You know, the, the, the Torah law, when we follow it right, it's, it's the path of peace. And the Torah law is for everybody, for non-Jews, for Martians, for, for ghosts. Torah law applies to everybody. Um, that's kind of what got me into this whole thing in the first place. I just... When I was in high school, we would study, you know, we'd have classes on ethics sometimes. And it was just my favorite class. I thought, what could be, what could be more important than just studying about right and wrong? You know, it would be like an elective class, kind of like just something that you didn't really have to take out of interest. I thought, okay. I started, I started, <laughs> I started to, I started to get the point, like something's wrong with this educational system. Like the, the class on right and wrong is not considered as important as the class on computer science or something, you know. And uh, with the rise of AI, artificial intelligence, boy, right and wrong is going to really have a increasing importance because whoever, whoever learns how to program those robots fastest is going to be able to do just about whatever they want in the world. And, uh, you know, chances are... They might not be the masters of ethics behind the robotics. We have a we have a big uh, field in Torah called uh, Jewish medical ethics, which, in my opinion, should be renamed uh, like Universal Torah Medical Ethics because the ethics really apply to everyone. And. Uh, I also want to help whoever is building the, uh, you know, it's bound to be a similar movement that's going to get speed upcoming, the, you know, tech, tech medical ethics. And every, every, you know, every company should have their, every tech company should you know, have some kind of certification for ethics. I was talking to the people in Machon Lev, very special school in uh, Israel for like a religious technical school, Machon Lev. Kind of like a little MIT, little Technion. And uh, yeah, I was telling a kid there, like, we should start a tech ethics club in your school. He thought it was a great idea, but didn't take hold. And uh, so anyhow, uh, any kind of serious practice, it really, uh, it's like, a, it's like a, a furnace. It's like a furnace. And when you, when you go into a furnace, Everything that uh, everything gets you know comes to a head. Fire brings stuff to a head. So when we when we when we do a, a real serious kind of training, like I said, it could really be any kind of training. Take full lotus, for instance. If you just practice full lotus really seriously in a in a clean ethical in a clean way, it's gonna really uh, push your system in a certain way. So you get more power and more insight and more force. And without those ethics, boy, from personal experience and from observation, without those ethics, you really you get yourself in trouble, you know? In the Zen system, they say if you train really hard without the right balance, you either become... Uh, no, they just say if you, if you really go for it. In Zen, if you really go for it, you either become a demon 
or go crazy or you become uh, liberated, you know? Sa sa same idea, same idea, but uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't do Zen without Torah ethics. It's too problematic. That's my advice from personal experience. So I'm looking for my, my greatest comrades in practice, my greatest teachers in practice, and my greatest students in practice. You know? With me, it's fluid, you know, teachers, students, comrades, it's all kind of fluid in general. At the same time, I think my teacher is hands down the, the, the greatest teacher on the planet. I don't say his name for a certain reason that if you ask about him, you'll realize. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's very interesting how many people watch these videos and never ask about him. It's kind of like, in a way, it's like the whole point, but they miss it. And they like him anyway, it's so good, you know. But uh, yeah, I feel like he's kind of the main point. But it's a long story. So it's a long story with a lot of suffering and a lot of glory. His hair is hoary, white. It's all right to have an insight at the beach in the night about the fight that we all have for our liberation. And um, I want to thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel. Maybe you know someone who would like this. Thank you in advance if you share it. And uh, you should have all the blessings. You should have all the blessings. Please contact me if I can help in any way. I work for pay and I also work for free and I also work for trade. So don't hesitate to contact me 24 hours. Much love and much blessing and much appreciation. Bye.